Welcome back, friends. Um, today and for the next few episodes, Sarah and I thought we would take up um, the sacraments. Um, and because I have other uh, research interest in this particular topic, we're starting with the Eucharist. Now, if we were looking at it more of a chronological uh, pattern for the life of the believer, we would, of course, start with baptism. But here we are. <laughs> a typical professor likes to, and not that I am one, but, you know, likes to get a lot of mileage out of right. one set of research. So th that that was my motivation. However, comma, and I'll come into this in a little bit as to, so we're going to study the Eucharist. And I have um, decided to limit the uh, historical inquiry to the pre-Constantine era or um, if you're of uh, our separated brethren, or if you're the Catholic persuasion, we like to call it the pre-Nicene uh, epoch. And that roughly is about the same time frame. Mm -hmm. And I have noticed with much interest a uh, tremendous um, uh, surge, if you will, of our separated brethren into communion, the Eucharist. Um, a few years ago, I had the opportunity of being at a dedication or a rededication of a Presbyterian sem seminary, and they had just uh, gotten a new altar. The altar was with very, in their minds, very precise uh, uh, dimensions blessing of the rooms with hyssop, with holy water. Very, very interesting to my mind. Um, I know a number of homebound Protestant um, separated brethren who have communion brought to them by their communities. And a resurgence of those uh, voices with the evangelical, evangelical world about communion and e it's and we're going to go through what our uh, the earliest uh, you know the earliest Christians had to think about, but it's in that same vein of um, uh, power, un a cause of unity, just not a symbol of it, but it actually causes it. So it's a very if say you that will, again, Karen. I think that's important. It it, it causes unity. Um, there's the symbol of unity when we all come together and it looks like, you know, God willing, we're all together because we're partaking in a similar thing. But it in and of itself causes that which we see. And that is a point that some Protestants are very much making now. So, so for a lot of reasons, we're starting off with the Eucharist. Um, and... Um, I guess we'll <laughs> opening opening remarks. <laughs> yeah, it, it, that is interesting. You know how you were talking about that—that that it's both a, a symbol, which is its less important element, but that it is by its own nature unitative or unitive. I guess is technically what I was trying to say. I mean, that's that's. I, I think that that is often lost that we we often get lost in the superficial the superficiality of symbolism right which is different from it being a symbol of something right i mean we we get wrapped up in the in the externals but although because we are in a sacramental church we recognize the absolute importance of physical matter that our, our lord made us both with a body and a spirit right so that that we cannot easily discount physical matter Oftentimes we are too caught up in the trappings that if the human person is doing the same action, there go, therefore they are they are unified. But it really the the is it's essential for understanding, lest we lose the value, its authentic value, which as you said is to to create unity simply by pursuing the 
external forms of uniformity. That's right. That's right. So I guess um, some some basic overview of the uh, lit liturgical uh, or uh, theological church history, I think, would be in order. So you have that time of Jesus Christ, right? It's up to about 33 um, AD, that type of thing. Then you would have the apostolic period. Of course, that's up until the um, last apostle will die, which is John, which is around 99. Then you're going to have the patristic period. That <clears throat> does extend past 311. And it would so these are the ones you're not going to hear about, at least not directly. So I'm going to go ahead. And, and so again, I'm kind of, okay. So why stop it? Why don't Why don't we include these giants? I'm about to tell you, we're not going to hear too much of it. And it's because <laughs> <laughs> because our separated brethren or the pre and this is and I'm telling you, this is a real thing within when I was doing my study. This is a real thing within. Not just German theologians. It's always tempting to blame them for a whole lot, but within a certain <laughs> shh, shh, for good reason. You know what I mean? They right. they well, well, what's going on between Nicaea? You know, as if something went off the rails. And I intend to show just by looking at that sort of a measure, uh, we can see that what we do today as Catholics is what they did uh, back going to the apostles. I mean, Peter and, and and the rest of them, because they were divinely instructed by our, by our Lord himself. So, right. but back to patristic. So some of these, we're not going to, Augustine, Athanasius, Christendom, Beza, we will hear about just briefly, mm -hmm. um, but but that comes after that time frame. Um, yes, pre it's a nod to our ancient roots. Some wrongly suggest. So now this is, so I had to have a little, you know, just to, to the Catholic errant theologian. So now to the Protestant. Constantine did not require um, worship, worship of Christ. Of Christ. He just um, stopped the act of persecution of Christians. And that's that's really become, for some of our separated, that becomes a real sticking spot in their minds because they think that that's where the corruption of the church actually began, is that it was mandated. And so, and so it was not. It wasn't mandated. It was just permitted without persecution. Um, let's see. So the words of uh, Saint Basil, I think, are apropos, even though he's he's writing, you know, more into the five, you know, three hundred, four hundreds, five hundred, something like that. He will say, as everyone knows. So he's presuming this is common knowledge. As everyone knows, we are not content in the liturgy simply to recite the words recorded by St. Paul in the Gospels. But we add other words, both before and after. So some, and, and, and you'll see this with some of how we have come up with the Novus Ordo, that, well, we are just supposed to be having some sort of a Last Supper situation. And the closer we are to that, um, Whatever might come up into the imagination of the expert or the individual is what we should be doing. That's not what Basil thought, and that's what he's and that's what he's saying. That's not what everyone else thinks at this time either. He says, "We have received these words from unwritten teaching." He's he's saying that the actions, the words, the prayers. Um, have been received from uh, from the hand of the Lord Himself. Um, that and I have all these quotes and notes as always in the um, footnotes and everything. 
Do you have any thoughts, Sarah? Are we we good there? I that's probably, uh, no, I, I mean, yeah, that's interesting. Right, so. the, whole, the whole element of the, you know, the, the testament there, the, to the capital T tradition. Right? I mean, it, that goes back to even scriptures where at the end of Revelation, John says that if all, if everything that had been said had been written down, all of the books of the world at that time, right? I mean, he's not saying that all the works of, of, of the world until the end of time, right? But all of the books at that time that had been written could not have contained all of the important things that our Lord had told him. However, there was an understanding that there was going to be things that were both taught and handed down through word of mouth because scripture is also clear on that too, right? Faith comes through hearing. That's correct. That's right. And so the, the predominant medium through which they were going to spread this was going to be through, you know, an oral medium, which at that time would not have been an unrecognized means for passing on historical truths, right? All the great epic poets. That's right. And we're going to pick up oral tradition. We're going to pick that up um, and we're going to head that in because that's right. We have to get that straightened out. And I do have a cheat sheet here for my dates my people and basil was in the mid 300s all right my friends let us pick up in the next episode about all right i told you who we can't hear from at least not too much let's hear let's hear from those whom we can to the next time fides adracio <laughs>